Marines. Oh, right. When are you leaving? I'm leaving on the 6 a.m. Right. Friday. I'll call the agenda for the workshop to order 6 23 City of Collegedale, and we'll just jump right into it. So, first up on our discussion topics tonight is a legislative update by Bridget Ray. Thank you, Ann. Good afternoon. I wanted to bring to you tonight um, just a, a sample of some of the bills that were most important to the coalition this year that we kept an eye on. Uh, we typically watch for bills that affect local control and that can influence our revenue stream. And trust me, 2023 legislative session did not disappoint us. There were nearly 1,600 bills introduced this year. And out of that 1,600, there were 750, almost half of them, that impacted the municipalities. One of the major ones that you, if you've listened to the MTAS with Alicia Hodge, you probably already know a few of these things that I'm gonna be talking about, but I'll try to go through them kind of quickly. Uh, public chapter 398 regarding de-annexation. This was Senator Watson. He took on Representative Carter's de-annexation quest and that bill. When he introduced it, it was very vague and we had a lot of concern with it. So the coalition put together a positioning paper and we sent it to him and asked for a meeting so we could discuss it with him because we saw too many issues with the creation of donut holes, not a clear explanation as to what agricultural property was. He agreed. We reached out to both mayors, uh, excuse me, Mayor Womp and Mayor Kelly uh, and updated them on it and sent them our papers and we sent our papers to TML. We had the discussion with Senator Watson and he seemed to be understanding 
and appreciative of our efforts. Uh, but in the long run, it did wind up going into a special committee at the end of the session. Um, and there were concessions made to where we did get a lot of the things we had asked for in that there will not be a creation of donut hose and so forth and a better description of what a farmer is, what is agricultural. Uh, so that one did pass and that is now PC 398. And I think it went into effect and in, in it go, I think it goes into effect July. Um, public chapter 1101 is one that did not pass. Excuse me. That is it, the, it was a, a bill that affected public chapter 1101 and it seeks to eliminate urban growth boundaries. This was another one that Senator Watson had introduced. Um, this one will come back next year. Uh, it got taken off notice, and so we're gonna watch for that one to come back. As it's written, <coughs> it seems not a bad thing, but we're gonna keep our eyes on it and see how it changes. Uh, codes was another area that we were very concerned about. They introduced a bill that would allow builders and contractors to use their own inspectors. They did not have to use the city's inspectors. We expressed a lot of concern about that one. That bill will come back next year. It was put on hold. A similar bill passed that said you could, if, if the city wanted to do that, you could use an outside inspector and work with the builders, but you had the choice. The bill that we were fighting said you didn't have a choice. So that one we do, we are keeping an eye on. Hey, Bridget. Yes, sir. Just to add to that, it was my understanding from our recent Tennessee building officials that they did pass something electrically regarding electrical code that uh, electrical engineer can legally in Tennessee perform an inspection in place of the local jurisdiction is what I understood. And you have to accept it? The city or has electrical. to accept it? That's my understanding, so that's something we might want to just look into. Okay. Can you send me that information? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. I do not know about that one. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, bills on zoning that did pass, which would permit the application to be judged on the law in effect at the time of the application, if that makes sense. Um, How does that differ than what we do? That has been our practice. But there evidently have been some municipalities that would review a proposal based upon the intent to change the regulations mm -hmm. rather than the regulations in effect. But as long as I've been at the city, we always reviewed based upon in effect at time of application. Does that help? Mm -hmm. I, I've got the whole paragraph here to read to you. <laughs> rather okay. you don't have <laughs> okay. uh, fire, there were a lot of bills this year on firearms and ammunition. Um, when the unfortunate shooting happened at the school in Nashville, Senator Garden hired shut down all those bills. He has moved them to 2024. There is one, and Jack, I'm sure you've heard of this one too. There's one we're very concerned about that you can carry a gun on any property, no matter if it's posted or not. And we're really watching that one. That makes us nervous. Uh, there's several this year that we were shaking our heads going seriously. But all of those were, were closed and will probably reappear during the next session. Um, you all are aware that Juneteenth was made an, into a legal holiday by the state. And taxes is the big issue this year. Um, there was a push to eliminate business taxes, all business taxes. And uh, it, of course, all the cities fought back on that one. If that bill had passed, this year, then TML estimates that over $274 million in revenue would be lost next fiscal year. And then at least 323 million thereafter. So we truly expect that one to come back because they're starting to gain some acceptance of that bill in the legislature. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that bill. The Senator, the House Speaker Sexton and the Lieutenant Governor McNally introduced a caption bill that when we found out what it was all about would uh, put a property tax cap on. So you could only increase your taxes this much every time you increase property taxes. So that one is suggested to go into a study and then there's, they're continuing to work with Speaker Sexton and uh, Lieutenant Governor McNally on that. And then of course TML, 
I've talked with Anthony Haynes. Uh, they're not going to let go of their push to get that state shared sales tax increase. And they're going to come on a little bit stronger next year. I'm not sure exactly what the plans are. Uh, we are going to request a meeting with him to see if we can find out more about what are their plans. And I'm sure they're going to be sharing them with all the cities soon anyway, but we're going to keep an eye on that one. Um, there was a bill that passed on traffic safety. Um, a legislative body, uh, the municipality can now establish a fine for speeding in a residential zone at $200. And I do believe that had been $50 before. I remember exactly. But, that. but it, they increased that to $200, but the legislative body has to vote on that. And then we were just talking about this one, about the uh, open meetings that Senator Gardenhire introduced the bill to where you have to put the agenda out for all meetings at least 48 hours in advance. He originally had on it all the agenda and all supporting documentation, and that was changed to just be the agenda. So that can be put on your website or anywhere the public can get access. Then the um, public comment period is the one that's causing some confusion. Um, if you listen to Alicia, she had said that any meeting that the public attended, you would have to give them a chance to have a comment period. But you two were just talking about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at that and see yeah. what comes out of that. The city attorney has not come to that same conclusion based on language in the, the bill. Um, our expectation is there will be clarifying language produced at some time in the future because everyone is confused what qualifies as a meeting requiring public comment and, and what does not but right now the city attorney has defined that as voting meetings well didn't it also come out in that announcement from um the comptroller said, letter the comptroller it, it did not immediately had sent that to, to know who was going to speak prior to the meeting mm -hmm. and i wondered how we would go about doing that so, so there's a process that, that can be established where someone can email to get set up, et cetera. Um, my suggestion to the commission would be we keep doing what we've, we've been doing. Uh, and when we re-advertise and when we're bringing uh, the resolute or ordinance to be voted on on the 17th, what's written is they simply raise their hand and they can come up and speak. That way we're defaulting to allowing everyone that wants to speak or more people to speak rather than eliminating anyone because they didn't go to email. Excuse me. And, and so that's what our recommendation is going to be. And that came from Sam as well. <clears throat> we'll be bringing that on the 17th. We had to get enough advertisement days in the paper since it's Sunday only. Anyway, the, the last one I want to ask about, uh, do you all have a property tax freeze? In no. 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 That's all I have. Hey, can I ask a couple questions? Sure. I didn't want to interrupt you, but right. on the elimination of the tax. The business tax? Yeah. So where is, for us as a small city, in the grand scheme, how does that impact us? It, it would definitely hurt us. I don't have the exact number. It's 209000 yeah. this year. Yeah. So it's so far. It's a big one. Yeah. It would be absolutely noticed. And the urban growth boundaries? Yes, sir. So I guess when I first became a commissioner back in 2001, we signed that into law, I guess, from, from all the cities. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I think that's a good thing to go away. It, and, and that's the feedback I gave to Senator Watson, was if they didn't change the bill as written, it would actually be very good. Uh, because technically, and, and I spoke to RPA about this a few months back, we're supposed to have committees together spun up to be redrawing the urban growth boundaries right now, according to the law that's in effect, that essentially has no usage since there's no annexation by ordinance. Mm -hmm. So the only people that can be annexed are the ones that request annexation, uh, which then the concern with deleting the urban growth boundaries is in a situation where you have unincorporated county adjacent to two municipalities, say us in Chattanooga, who gets that property? And so my feedback to Senator Watson was, let them ask wherever they want to ask. If, and if one city is more competitive than another, that's just how it shakes out. But those few cases, um, I think, are out, outweighed by the private property rights of those adjacent to a municipality that, for instance, would want, say, sewer access to request annexation into a city, even if they're outside the urban growth boundary. 
So if they don't get wild with the yeah. language, yeah. as it was written, was a very good bill. Because down the highway, there is property for sale. Yes. Like 26 acre track. Mm -hmm. There's actually a much larger one than that. Yeah. I know. Hundreds of acres. But there is, I mean, I think we own like 200 feet yes. road frontage. So if they do a development back there, in order to get access to our sewer. They would need to come into the yeah. city. So, And I, I use that that case as a specific example with Senator Watson of why deleting the urban growth boundary would be a good thing. And de-annexing, I'm opposed to that. Just I'm just putting on the record there. It, it So there are always, we try to eliminate donut holes yeah. because police and public works, people would, dispatched county to something but it was in the city of collegedale and you know there for a while even when COVID hit we had cracker barrel well chattanooga called and said that's ours and it wasn't it was the city of collegedale even though the the governor shut everything down a couple of days later they shut them down two days before they should have so impact us and i forgot forgot the lady's name i've got it somewhere but you know ted and i uh, walked through that with sam and had some outreaches made on it, but yep. I'm sure short is. I think de annexing can cause a lot of that, issues. That was, and that was the coalition's position, and we, we came up with specific examples where it could be a problem. Who maintains the road? Mm -hmm. Half the right of ways in the county, half the right of ways in a city. When you pave it, are you really going to stop for 300 feet, etc.? Um, and, and they did make some concessions. It was a much, much, much better bill than it initially drafted. We didn't get everything frankly, um, but where we, we landed is, I would deem acceptable. Yes. Uh, it's not as That's painful as it could have been. Yeah. And the last thing before I um, be quiet. So I know you cringed on gun control about where you can carry. I'm going to tell you, and I'm not reflecting on the police department here, but if a shooter was to come in at a commission meeting, sometimes we don't have an officer close by. And there's one officer, and if they shoot that officer, I would like to be, defend myself. I've had my handgun permit for many, many years, and I think in today's age, we all should be. Those, those of us that qualify to carry one should be allowed Thank to. You. And I think that might be the piece that might be missing in the yeah. as I just want to make sure that Thank you. I'm clear on my point on that one. There were several bills. Uh, they ranged from bills to allow you to carry inside active courtrooms to bills to allow any person to carry to breaking up enhanced carry versus standard carry. And standard carry is basically just mailing a picture. Of your finger. Yeah, and, and I will just say our police department is here most of the time, you know, and, you know, we're very lucky to have them here. Many years ago, we didn't have them here at, at our commission meetings. Um, but I'm, I'm just glad we do today. But still being said, I'm a supporter of it, and I just want to make sure I stay to that. All right. All right. Ooh, oh, sorry. Did not mean to do that. Was there something where there is now money allocated for even private schools to have SROs? It's so, not SROs. It's cameras. Yeah. Just cameras. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the private schools. I talked to Senator Watson about it because we had the same concern. Okay. And he said that the private schools, the thought was they can get their own SROs. They want them to use that. It's not reoccurring money. And so they want them to get the equipment and so forth. So it's one time only. Yes. For the private schools, yes. We had recently reached out on that one too for the later agenda item. Is it? That's it. All right. So moving on to e-bikes and rules for the Greenway usage. So the, the email was shared uh, questioning e-bikes. State law pro prohibits us from banning class one and class two e-bikes from, from Greenway facilities. They preempted us. We can only ban class three. Uh, the difference is the maximum mileage an hour goes from 20 to 28. How you tell them it's part, I have no idea and on a simple visual. Um, but then Commissioner Sadler pointed out that she didn't believe we had passed rules in a formal capacity, and we couldn't find where we had. Okay. We found hours and, and those sorts of things. Um, and so in your packet, there is a starting point of rules based on what our peers have done. What we would like to do is put out a community survey based on these rules and ask for additional suggestions. 
and then get in front of you with, with an ordinance to formally adopt rules. Um, these are all pretty simple. It's the hours that you currently have passed. We kept those the same. Uh, things that we have noticed, such as you know profanity in some places, dogs need to be on leashes, et cetera. Um, so they're all pretty simple. Again, they're, they're based on our peers and what they've been doing. And, and so that's our intention, minus any feedback, is to put this out in the community survey to be voted on and then open up for suggestions from the community and then bring a formal ordinance in front of y'all and then uh, post up some signage in a few months once we get through that process. This came up many, many years ago. And because the governor gave us the money out of alternate transportation, mm -hmm. we could not block bikes or motorcycles at that time or golf carts. So it, it may have changed since then, but what, what we're reading is internal combustion. We can e-bikes. We can't. So it may have changed since then. Uh, that, that's what we're finding. It does bring up a good question though. And please interject if I misspeak. Mm -hmm. uh, it does bring up a good question on electric golf carts versus internal combustion golf carts. And, and do we want to allow one or or neither. Um, and I think that would be another good question for our poll and let, let the community give us some in, input on that. Uh, the, operationally, the current concern I would have is a, a standard golf cart four to five feet wide. Our greenway is eight Wait. with nowhere to step off. So if you have a stroller and a dog on one side and a golf cart on the other, or some of us that use golf carts to run our dogs. And so you have a dog beside you at 12 miles an hour running down the greenway, it gets real crowded real quick. Mm -hmm. So anything that's side by side from a spaceage, just simple space usage <clears throat> would be a concern. Um, we'd like to include that in the poll as well. That's a good thought. I like yeah, that. When we, when we take the parks and rec golf cart on the greenway to check out how everything's looking, nobody can go right next to us. There's not enough room. Um, and we already get complaints about how wide recumbent bikes are as um, as well as the double wide strollers and the extra kids. So we already know that it's tight. Um, also, we do have um, overhangs. We have a bridge. There's a lot of stuff that's very tight that there could be some accidents. Okay, so then we'll we'll get that poll started. Uh, we'll share the results with you uh, probably when we get it at a workshop after we get it and then we'll bring right in front of you. All right. Next item was the request for information logging uh, for the commission. We did that. It was included in your packet. We don't really have anything to say. Uh, so we've provided it for y'all. I thought that was going to include when we had this discussion, you were also going to include all media requests, anything from attorneys or private citizens, because the vice mayor was wanting to see in the future if we needed to hire personnel to handle records requests. We can go back and, and see what all information we requested. Um, I did not understand that, so it may have been an oversight on my part, and we can certainly add that going forward. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we it was brought up that to modify having the public hearing for future budget ordinances at the first meeting. Talk to Sam, we can do that. We can set our own policy. Um, and state law will allow us to make, we have to post a draft budget with specific numbers for the public hearing. We are allowed to change. I could foresee a situation where that number changes more than someone thinks is acceptable. $100, I don't think anyone would notice a number for someone would get too big. Uh, so my suggestion <coughs> would be let's set parameters that if it's going to change outside of a certain percentage per say department, that then we would need to re-advertise. Does that sound reasonable? The budget perspective? Correct. So say we were to advertise a budget of $13.5 million. We have our public hearing. We make a bunch of changes, and I don't think we would do this, but then we come back and pass a budget at $15 million two weeks later. I think we would all agree that was, I won't say disingenuous, but a much bigger change in what was advertised wasn't in keeping with what was voted. So my suggestion would be to find a number we're comfortable with as a percentage change. So say, really, if it changed $10,000 total on $13.5 million, that's 
probably de minimis and is certainly keeping in the intent of the process. And that could be, that would be fine. So my gut says 5%, um, but that's just a starting point for the conversation. I'm not fixed on it. I just think we need a set of parameters. We set our process. Do we also want to do where we're changing where public hearings are for all public, not just the budget, but for any ordinance that way it's just citizens won't be confused about on this. It's the first, not this is the second. It'll significantly slow down the process, um, and that that will become a complaint, especially in developments, because um, it'll add the advertisement period will increase, and so it adds to the process. My suggestion would be to stick with the budget now, since that was where this started, um, and, and not add an extra month on all development projects. Would we vote on this in the form of a resolution? I, I think that would be very appropriate. So that it's absolutely referenceable for all of us. Do, do we think five percent is a reasonable change? I want to. I do want to put a percentage down so that we're we're all held to a standard on on what we consider de minimis. I'd probably like a little public feedback on what they would think was acceptable if we needed to re-advertise. Okay. We. I think that'd be a good idea, and we'll add that as another poll, if you don't mind, Kristen. Because we used to have it where the public hearing was the first meeting, mm -hmm. and then we moved we it. Used to, to do that on all of them. Yeah, we yeah. moved it to we the did. second. Right to and add I think, efficiency. And I like having it on the first. I, I think it's got some good valid points to it, but I can see, like you said, it does cause the developers the, the carried interest right now on developments is a, a huge concern secondary to financing. The numbers are real big, real fast. I could go for this a little bit. If I don't know what who's who's the math person here. What's five percent of thirteen million? What's five percent of thirteen million? That's where I was. He's I was like, good I at that in his head. Six hundred fifty thousand. So six hundred fifty thousand. What's 2.5? Just cut that in half. So that'd be 325? Yeah. He said, six, yeah, that would be 325. If did the, I just, uh, I mean, to me, 300,000 is a little high for me for, I think it needs to be. I wanted to start the conversation with a number that we. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, we're definitely going to have to get the budgets sooner because it could extend out. And, and well, in fairness, the drawback to that yeah. is our forecast become less and less accurate the yeah. earlier and earlier we get them. And, and it already was less accurate because we gave it earlier two years in a row. Last year it was a little less accurate, and this year we gave it even earlier. Until we get actual. So we have to we have to accept that give and take, getting them earlier, because by doing it this way, it, we do need to add a little more time. We're, we're going to start. When do we get it this year? March. You got it in I mean, March. April. Late eight. In March. March. You got it in March. Yeah. We would need to. Okay, so start that's, our that's as early as I feel. So like. March is. Sorry, I was thinking it was April. So it, it's March is a, a push, and, and the numbers. The are, end of March. Wasn't it the last part of March? It, it was, was the end of March. It was a month was. before the workshop. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we basically, what, what we did last year is, we asked for commission feedback in. January, we had department presentations in February, and then put the budget out in, in March. We spent the month of March getting everything. So we have to have it in by June 30th. Correct. Um, so you're actually more or less trying to get the budget done before half the year is over, before the whole year is over. You're cutting it out a half a year and not taking into consideration what is going to be happening the, that last six months of the fiscal year. Starting much before March, it's going to create some error. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we're going to be, we're going to have to do a lot more of a readjusting. And we'll have to, and we probably should, we'll have to throw in a couple of work, at least one work session like we used to do um, in April. What I would envision is there would be an early budget presentation based on the draft. Two weeks later, a special call work session followed by another presentation with final numbers, then an advertisement, et cetera. So there would be. I, I think have two workshop top one. Mm -hmm. We would just have to do. I, I think it's. I think that's good for the public. Yeah. But we'd have to 
do I think we have to do a special call just April, May, I or think in so June. Too. So we would have to have yeah. two in April. Yeah. Um, we'd have more of a feedback give time for everything to come in that because uh, it's a guideline. A budget is yeah. a guideline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it absolutely is. Um, there's been a lot more added expense this year all the way around because of the inflation. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I'll I think be having the workshops that are good. I'll be happy with, two, you know, two workshop two type workshops, meetings. Yeah. I had some feedback. Citizens thought that there should have probably been one more at least workshop where we were discussing. Mm -hmm. I think two workshops. So, so what I'm hearing is we would produce a draft budget in March, same. same time that we did this year. And then two weeks after that in April, we'd do a special call meeting to go over it and get feedback from the commission at that point. And then at workshop in April, we would present final to then have a public hearing at the first meeting. And then get it passed before. The, which would be the second meeting in May. Yeah. Is yeah. kind of what I'm yeah. hearing. It sounds, I'm happy with that progress and, on it. And I'm hearing 2.5% will be the line on de minimis for total budget and 5% per department or 2.5 period. Just make it flat two and a half. Then you Total don't budget. have to deal with Ups two sets nine. of numbers. Okay, um, two and a half. <clears throat> Good suggestion. I think. I think. I really wish we could find. I know this sounds terrible, but the old stick a letter on the garbage can. We, we used to get things accomplished a little bit more out as far as trash. Movement. Yeah, <laughs> as far as communication to the citizens. You know, a lot of people don't go to our website. A lot of people go to the uh, social media sites now. Mm -hmm. And we um, pushed pretty heavily. Yeah, I know. Um, and I just really wish there was a way for us really to get a postcard out maybe or some. I know it's money, but. Um, it's money and a lot of time since there's no easy way to sort mailing addresses. Oh, you go down to the um, voting records, they can tell you exactly. So, um, and could they not uh, I hate to do this to you, but do uh, go out like with the garbage cans, like you said, because a lot of people will, yeah. But the problem is that's a lot of labor yeah, to, it's, for their they staff. Just have, it's, to me, a we don't postcard you could, yeah. oh, great. So, usually before meetings, I post on Facebook the agenda. Um, I could start posting something that's a little bit more than just you know a text. Um, I notice photos and videos get a little bit more traction, so um, for bigger stuff like that for the budget, I think. Maybe videos or photos or something. Probably mm -hmm. get more people looking at it. I'm amazed that people still don't know we stream our meetings. Uh, I've been talking to a couple people about we don't know what's going on in the city. So, well, you know, we have our public workshop and we have our commission meetings and they're streamed, there's notes, there's agendas. Mm -hmm. I guess I need to go look at that. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. you lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink, but still, you've got to. You know, it's if you want the information that's out there, we we can uh, brainstorm over the summer on ideas to get the message out there more broadly. Um, to, to your point, we need to get it out there. At the same time, we need the citizens to give us feedback mm -hmm. more than the fifteen or so that speak up on most issues. It would be great to have more general feedback. And I'm. A lot of people, it doesn't, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say it doesn't impact them, but I think they just don't really care to come down to commission meeting and sit here and listen uh, when it does impact them. So you could put it on that on the news when they have community events. So there they go. Cause and I don't know, news. can we do things like on the news channel? I mean, I see a lot of, you know, we can submit press releases more frequently. Yeah. I, I see I little breaks about, you know, on News Channel 9 or one of those that will have some. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we can get more aggressive on our press releases leading up to things like budget. Um, and does our social media sites and also the website track hits? It does. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to see what those are. Just we can pull them. Not, not a lot of to work to it, but I mean, I'm just curious. I know the police does. I, I hear a lot of people buzz they about the police. Um, and Jason, can, 
can speak to it more directly. I think our biggest story in the last several months has been Little Debbie Park. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> our, our budget stuff is, is frankly insignificant in, in reach in comparison to things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Um, even though we're posting them in the same place in the same way and, and, and that sort of thing, I think it's just a reflection of community interest and community understanding. Yep. Um, we'll continue to brainstorm. We're open for any ideas. Uh, we'll look into what it would take and the cost associated with mailers um, from an end, not only to get the addresses and the cost of it and time to prepare and produce mailers and all, mm -hmm. uh, it, it could add up pretty quick in, in time. There was a nice article by the police department this week. There was. Weekend. Yeah. I was wondering about um, talking with the uh, communications department and getting a student to take it on for a quarterly news. At SAU? Uh huh. We, we can reach out and see if they want to. Because, you know, they, they print something about the city in their weekly paper. So maybe we could get them to also put out a, a newsletter, maybe once a quarter. Okay. Yeah, we'll certainly reach out. I'm taking All right. So with that, we'll move on to number five, Colchester Academy Safety Resource Officer Proposal. So Colchester Academy reached out to us, um, and I included it in your, Christy included it in your packet. Uh, they would like to partner with the city to hire a resource officer through us. It would be an employee of the Colchester Police Department. We would uh, hire, train, manage, et cetera. They would reimburse us for nine months of that uh, employee's salary, equipment, et cetera. And then we would cover the three months that they're out of school. Uh, we would use them for special details, uh, covering in during vacations and training, et cetera, click their ticket that all seem to get pretty hard during the summer. So it wouldn't be uh, difficult to absorb during those three months. Uh, and we can, we can cover those three months under the current budget. Um, I, I and the chief think this is an outstanding idea. Um, the shooting in, in Nashville really showed very close to the vulnerabilities at private schools and, and having a college Joe police officer there responding immediately uh, is, is a definite need and being able to partner with college Hill Academy, uh, I think is a win for everybody. And, and so we would like to pursue that, uh, the process we ran it by saying we would bring a MOU to the commission, simply agreeing to the, them paying nine months and us paying three. Um, and again, we can cover it under the current budget, so it wouldn't be part of an amendment. Is there any feedback, trepidation? Well, what happened in situations where the SRO was sick? Would we have to pull from patrol to cover it? In those situations, we, we would. Because we'd be under we'd be under obligation. What if that leaves the city short? Currently, something like regular sick leave, I'm not talking a 30-day illness we could handle a day or two for a sickness or a flu. Um, if, if we, if someone was going to be out for an extended period of time, we would have to look into how we backfit some of that. Um, just like with any other sickness. I'm just thinking about protocols. Like if there's only three people scheduled and you have somebody call off sick, who's going to fill the, the if, slot for the day if. Right. L luckily the hours are, during the day, and, and there, it's an eight-ish hour shift, and, and I'll let the chief speak to it more completely. I don't, I don't. I think we'd be able to certainly absorb week off vacation, week off for school, a couple of days off for sickness. I don't, I don't foresee that being a, a challenge for us at all. And again, as the city manager noted, uh, since you're dealing with school and school hours, uh, the, the patrol lieutenant's usually here, the assistant chief's here, I'm here. We have two detectives here. Um, so the availability for officers to be available to cover a district, answer a call, I, I just don't see that being being a challenge for us. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, we, we will have, when we're fully staffed, we'll have the canine positions that aren't 
patrol scheduled at that point, you can flex them, move them around, adjust them as necessary, and they can certainly cover districts and answer calls as needed. Basically, you're going to do what I'm understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're basically going to be doing the same thing you're doing now when we have an officer that calls in sick, you pull somebody, or you have the manpower to take care of, to take care of that. Uh, I will say that this is a good idea, but only, and it needs to be a police officer just for, for legalities, and, and it, it's really good. I've, I've worked in the education for over 40 years, and, um, and I was involved in the Dalton shooting a couple of years ago. That happened right next to my classroom. Uh, and it was a resource officer who was able to talk the gentleman down. He had a rapport with him. He had a rapport with the community that we worked, and, and everything was resolved in a very minimal time, and nobody was hurt or harmed. Um, I do not, I would not agree for a um, security guard or Waldens or a private agency, even though I know they are well, they do not have the same legal authority as a police officer. That was the conclusion the academy came to. They're yeah, not as well trained and they don't have the same authority and that, that's why they reached out to us to partner. And, and the fact that they'd be coming through the city and being an employee of the city, it eliminates that issue that this principal, if there is something, and I've seen this happen before, where the principal had to be called down by a resource officer. And they didn't have to worry about, oh, this is my boss. You know, I can't call him down. So I think that this is a good program. I will back it 100%, you know, uh, unless we see in the future and I've, in the years that I've dealt with, I've always fought for SROs it, that didn't need one. Right now, they're very good. I think there needs to be one in every school. What about the having three different campuses? So right now, what is being discussed is one officer would cover those. Um, you're aware that the plan is for Spalding to move, mm -hmm. which puts them together, which would certainly spread that officer less thin. Yeah. Because um, it would be a while before that building is built. About two years. But now Dalton, we have, uh, and they do it effectively. They have one resource officer that splits between the middle school mm -hmm. and the high school, and now there's two high schools. But uh, when there needs to be backup or something, they, the police department responds right. effectively. And it, it's worked very well, I know, for the seven years that I've been there. Uh, even at Brainerd, how it's respond because they're keeping that interaction between the regular police department and so forth. And the officer, to further answer your question, would work with the school on a threats analysis. Assemblies are going to be a bigger threat than other items. So they would prioritize having an officer present at assemblies and that sort of thing um, as, as they go through the day. I have... I think it's great SROs in the school. We should have one in every school. What I'm concerned right now is the timing with our retention with our police department. I fear that it's almost certain if we train someone to be an SRO, they're going to get poached by a nearby agency. I'd like to address that a little bit further on when we get into where you're talking about the manual. Okay. Okay. Um, because I have a recommendation to make. Okay. Returning and the police officers, but it, it's in the manual. Okay. Okay. Um, that, that'll be great. Um, your, your point is valid for mm -hmm. a multitude of positions. Retention is a challenge. Um, I, I would hate to not partner with the school and leave a vulnerability because of fear of being able to keep an SRO. Um, but there is a lot of pressure on all positions, SROs in particular, with the county expanding and hiring and that sort of thing. It's a, it's a fair concern, one that, that we share and retention is discussed amongst the management staff and myself on a weekly basis, uh, just because it, it's one of our greater challenges right now. Okay, and it also mentioned that um, CA would be a part of the hiring process. Do we run into any kind of legal issues where them being a part of the hiring process require different we we will have final say on our employee okay on, on the hiring but we will absolutely have them involved because an sro requires a specific personality type to to work with the children be the presence etc and, and they are looking for someone that's going to interact with the children 
And, and so they will be part of, similar how we do um, eval panel panels for most of our special assignments, they would be part of the eval panel. But at the end of the day, the final decision would be the chief and myself. Okay, so hiring will be decided by the city. It, it will be decided, but they'll be involved in that panel. Anything else? Okay. All right, so moving on to the employee manual, I'll try to be concise. Um, we, try to get, we try to get this out to you and a chance for you to skim through it, make notes, et cetera. Um, if I go too quick, because I have a tendency to get left brain and do, slow me down. Uh, but I'll try to just hit the uh, changes. Most of them are uh, simple modifications, tightening up of some language, that sort of thing. Um, nothing too crazy. Uh, starting with introduction to human resources, we had the line where specified some policies apply to all employees and officers in City College Tale. Was the only change there? Nothing in purpose, objectives, administration, et cetera. Uh, let's see, I don't think we had any. We did uh, update the patternization definition uh, to include other city employees or commissioners and, and removed the who are not married to one another portion of it. That was in fraternization, the definition of. Yeah, I had we, everything highlighted in my other. I did thing. too on my computer and I can't yeah. get it yeah. to. The, the copies appear. are in black and white, but they are high lit, but it's was apparent to me after I copied them that it, it's going to take some high strain to notice these portions. So I'll try to hit the ones. All right. Residency. Uh, we added uh, the last portion that residency defines uh, living within 20 miles for police department and uh, certain public works that have to respond to emergencies. This is on page 13. That's what I found. Yeah. Um, we didn't change the mileage, we left it as, as is. We did add, if, if an employee must temporarily reside elsewhere due to an emergency situation, the employee must notify his or her supervisor Im immediately to develop a plan to return to residing within the mileage limit within a reasonable time frame approved by the city manager. Uh, the policy does not apply to the city judge who by ordinance has risen in the county. We added that because life happens, fires happen. And so if an employee is in that situation, the onus is on them to develop a plan, get back within in that 20 mile range. Okay, may I interject something yep. here, my concern? Um, I brought this up a couple of months ago and I've, I've been thinking about it. So uh, with the help of the, um, the, I brought it to our chief and talked with him and I talked with you that I'm concerned about the 20 mile radius. I think it's not, it needs to be increased. And here's the reason why. We have grown a lot in our city. Um, and East Ridge, they do have a 25 mile radius. Signal Mountain and a couple other cities have no requirement whatsoever for their police officers in order to go to there. Um, and I, we have to look at the demographics of the area too. Signal Mountain is all mountainous. You mm -hmm. know, it would be kind of hard to do that. Solly Daisy has 25 mile, and I mean, excuse me, Chattanooga, and Solly Daisy has no requirement for their take home. Um, maybe after 25, they, they can call them or whatever. I got out a map of College Dale, and I pinpointed and drew a radius around our borders and so forth to see what it would include. Two reasons I'm concerned about this. Number one, we talked about the retention of employees. The majority of people that apply here can't afford to live here, okay? Uh, and so unless we want to really give our police officers a substantial living raise, <laughs> so that they can afford living uh, accommodations in this city because even a uh, apartment is around $1,300 a month if it's worth living in. And so what I would like to suggest is that we increase it. Uh, I thought about 40, about doubling it. I know that may sound like a lot, but when you go around, it would include more people that can live within the area. We've had some good responses of people applying for positions here, but because they may be two miles outside the city limits, couldn't hire them, and they might have been the best candidate for the position. So um, I understand about commissioners still living in the city. I think that is a good one. Uh, 
but I think that same, we need to expand law. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. So, but I think that um, we need to look at this a little bit better. Number one, increase the mileage. At 20, it needs to go up. Okay. Uh, I'm listening. I'm throwing the 40 out there just because I doubled it. Somebody, you know, my interjection here would be appreciated. I also think that um, for those two reasons, basically, I already agree because you've already put it down that if there's a circumstance that arises because, you know, you never know when your plumbing is going to go out or something and you have to go stay with somebody that may be out of the city limits by a couple of miles. Uh, I think if they notify the chief, uh, the assistant chief, and you, and y'all okay it because they have to bring that circumstance to you. I just, I trust your judgments in that. But I want to look at that seriously. I don't think 20, not, 20 miles is appropriate anymore. We've got housing coming up all around us, but it's from 400,000 above, okay? But we don't have anything, even my house, as humble as it is, appraises for $285,000 the last time I had it appraised. I would have to myself put in 150,000 to get a house that's equivalent to what I'm living in, you know? Um, so that's why I'm probably gonna slap on a few coats of paint and do my own, <laughs> do my own modeling. But, um, I think we need to seriously look at that. Number one is being able to get the the uh, people to apply. That would be good for our city. That because they're a couple of miles off, we can't hire them. And we've lost some good people in every department for that. Uh, and the fact that the um, have enough space for them to get to where they need to get so they can have housing and possibly purchase in the area within our city uh, and get a home that they can afford. Because they would definitely have to, and I'm sure the police officers wouldn't object to a hefty raise, but I don't think our city could handle that. So to me, this would be a feasible alternative or suggestion. I may be wrong. So I want y'all's input on that. So I thought this was more for people who had take-home cars versus the average um so Important. it is for uh, police have to take on cars. Yeah, but I mean, and public works does too, or correct. You know, um, and the ones in public works are expected to respond in certain situations, absolutely. like like I am. And um, we do have others without take on vehicles that still take call in public works. Uh, and are expect if if storms come through and police call us, hey, there's a tree down on Tucker Road. We have folks that have to respond in a timely manner to cut the trees. And, and so that's the origin of the mileage to be able to respond in a timely manner and uh, to address some of the the take on vehicle cost associated with it. Um, I, I don't think the the chief is going to disagree with Commissioner Baker. Um, we've had several good applicants that were in, in the 30 mile range, not the 20 and, and chose not to because they didn't want to move their children out of school. Um, it, which and, and while we're competing with lots of other people for police officers, it, it certainly is difficult keeping that 20 mile range. Well, my only point would be is, I don't think if you don't have a take home car assigned to you, I don't think the city should say there's a mileage because I will tell you, I've got two friends who live here in Collegedale and they drive to DeKalb County or fire department, pays more money and I get that. And I don't think that somebody in public works or at the um, finance office, if they didn't have a take-home car, I don't think we should care where they live as long as they show up during their hours. Now, getting if somebody's on call, that's a little different, but that doesn't happen on call for um, like a tree down or something like that. that doesn't happen as often so i'm not really concerned about that as much as um maybe the police department perspective and i'm okay with increasing the miles on that i think it's probably if you look at some of the other cities as long as you live um within hamilton county or uh the state of tennessee is what i've heard as well then they don't really care. Uh, I've worked in the operating room for years, and we had to have call, take our turn 
two or three times a week for call for emergencies. They never limited us in mileage. They just said you you have to have X number of minutes to mm -hmm. be there. And um, so I to me a time frame is more reasonable than a mileage. Okay. Um I will I will interject. I appreciate you saying that. I timed, I drove some routes um, before I received this. Uh, normally, not being in a rush because I didn't have the little lights to flicker on. Um, I drive to Dalton every day, which is normally a 45 minute to an hour drive, 45 minutes usually. But driving normally and the weather conditions are good and the traffic is flowing, I can make it in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But that's a 45 minute radius. Okay. Um, I know that when um, we had the incident with the shooting a couple of years ago, we had Atlanta respond. Atlanta was in our premises within an hour, but they were doing 100 miles an hour getting to where they needed to do coming up the interstate. We're talking about the demographics around us. I think a time frame is good, but even at 45 minutes, you can get somewhere, or 45 miles, you can get there in 30 minutes. And later in, in the mail, it does talk about responding to call in 45 minutes. Um, so what I'm hearing, and please interject if I'm, I'm misreading the room, is <coughs> change it to those taking call have, say, an hour to respond, um, and those with a take-home vehicle have to live within some mileage. It sounds like two of you said more than 20. Um, is there any other suggestions? Am I reading this correctly? I'm up and discussing extending the mileage to maybe 25 to match the other cities, something as high as 40. We got to start thinking about how that's affecting how many more cars we're going to have to replace, what that additional wear and tear will be. I can, I can see where she's talking about, but mm -hmm. I think a more feasible would be 30 or 35, to be honest. With you. I threw 45 out there just to get it started, but I think that 30 or 30, 30 to 35 would be more feasible and I think would be... Uh, in my mindset, a little bit more um, doable. And I want to respond to Commissioner Sadler. If, if there is a set mileage of X miles um, based on the consensus of the commission, if someone, say, lived outside of that but then parked their patrol car at a, another police station within whatever mileage the commission determines and then drove their personal vehicle the additional 10 miles, would that still be within what you're thinking? Yeah, I think that's pretty standard with agencies near us. Right. I just want to make sure, because that's not what we have written, and, and it would be a change. Yeah. In Chattanooga has just changed that. You I mean, go outside the city yeah. now where they did couldn't before because they used to park it on the highway, their police car. I think we should probably specify which kind of places we would be okay with it being parked at so it's not just like at a shopping mall. or. Right. It, it would, in my mind, and I'll let the chief weigh in, but I was thinking fire halls and police stations. It's typically a you know, fire hall, EMS station, Another government building, City Hall. I mean, I, Signal Mountain Chief just reached out to me today because he hired a young lady that lives in Cleveland and she needs to park her, you know, car here so she can drive back and forth from Cleveland. So, so Signal does have a, they have a limit too. Yeah, okay. twenty-five miles. So you well, you can live outside the twenty-five miles, but you can only take your if you're past the twenty-five, you can't take your take-home car. They you okay. have to leave your your take home car somewhere within that 25 mile an hour radius. Most, most agencies that are, are doing that. Um, as the city manager pointed out, I mean, I mean yes, I do support in, in increasing the, 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 the radius to you know, a reasonable level. Right. And, and different departments look at different things. We've got some departments that do radius or as the crow flies. And then we've got some agencies around us that do road miles. Um, so, you know, there's two points of discussion there. Uh, but again, as the city manager pointed out, you know, at least right now, we're in a situation where we're hiring, Red Bank's hiring, East Ridge is hiring, Signal Mountain's hiring, Saudi Daisy's hiring, Hamilton County is hiring. So anything that we can do to make ourselves more appealing as an employer or an agency to work for, to me, just benefits the city. Because, you know, as it's been shown, uh, you know, people will... Uh, gravitate towards who's got the this slightest better perk or this slightest better perk. So um, that's the situation we're dealing with now uh, is that everybody's hiring right now. So every agency in our county is competing against each other for good quality applicants and officers. So again, the more we can do to, to, to add benefits for our employees or be 
at least at or better in certain areas to be more appealing than than I, than, than I support that. Fully. What what do you think? Because you're in the profession, what do you think is a good choice for college Dell as for mileage increase? I, I'm comfortable in the 35 to 30 range. I don't know that I'd want to go too much outside of that. Um, uh, and again, I think it's open for discussion on fuel cost and wear and tear, whether that five or 10 miles, you know, makes that much of a difference. Um, but, you know, I can attest that we've had at least one, if not two really good applicants that we were prepared to, to give a job offer to, and we did, and they declined because they were in that 25 to 30 ish range and they either had family property that they'd inherited or they had kids and school systems and and so they chose not to work here and then they ended up either going to Hamilton County or other agencies that didn't have those restrictions so um, even if we met in the middle somewhere and we agreed on you know either a no mileage or a time lane but we we still gave them 25 to 30 miles you know to take their car and then if they're outside of that then i think that's a perfectly reasonable compromise but i think we're really restricting ourselves at, at, at 20 miles as far as applicable so i guess in essence what we're saying is if they take home a vehicle we do the the 35 you know and then have them park it in one of the specific areas that we feel is comfortable like uh, one of the uh, first responders. And, and again, not to sound greedy, but, you know, let's say we all agreed 35 miles was reasonable. You know, if we can say we'll let you take your take home car 35 miles instead of 25 and everything else is equitable, you know, some officers will say, well, I'm going to come work for you because I can take my car home and I don't want to have to fool with parking it. So just something to consider. I know we have to be responsible with fuel and mileage and wear and tear. But again, I think, you know, the more appealing we can make ourselves, even with little perks like that, you know, I think it'll benefit us in the long run. Along with that recruiting, where do we currently recruit for new officers? Is it just all, all over? I mean, all over. we're on Indeed, we're on all social media platforms. We're on our website. Um, we've put out stuff in church bulletins. We've, uh, I mean, we, we, we have expanded so much and we've, we've gone to, to some specialty websites. Um, we have increased our outreach as much as I think we possibly can at this point. I mean, we we get we we have no shortage of applicants. I mean, we have applicants from as far as way as West Coast, you know. Then it becomes logistically how do you interview those people, how do you test those people? Um, we're not necessarily seeing a problem with applications coming in and we've been able to pretty quickly fill the positions as they as officers you know as move on or change agencies uh, you know right, right now we have one position open um, you know and we, as we all know we've lost a few over the last several months to the sheriff's office and other agencies and we're certainly not alone in that i, I think east ridge or red bank lost two or three to the sheriff's office recently and like i said we're all hiring so um we're doing, I think, as much as we can do in, in the recruitment area. Uh, we're, we're trying to get out a uh, assistant chief. I know we went to Indeed, didn't we do Zip Recruiter, Zip Recruiter yeah. LinkedIn? I mean, we've <laughs> if there's an employment thing out there, we, we've posted on it. We've gone into a couple of publications and some different websites. So, again, we've got a stack of applications. It's just finding, you know, the right fit, the right ones for us and, and – uh, you know the quality of the applicant well i think we have to be responsible you know to the citizens as well Agreed. i think i think that if we don't have police officers we're not being responsible to them and i appreciate what the commissioner was saying about the 25 miles but i think we really have to really think about overall in a year is it that much additional wear and tear for five or maybe ten miles over that um because i think years ago we looked at it if the officer took the car home, he he really took better care of it. I'm not really comfortable leaving cars at a fire station. Well, police department's a little bit better. Some fire stations don't have cameras. And Station 1, Chattanooga Fire Department down, downtown, cars were getting broken in of the firefighters, and they had to put fences around it. You know, and then the fences, people were crawling over the fence to... So it is a challenge, and I would like to say, from my perspective, I'm okay if we talk about this in commission meeting, 
I'm in the 30 to 35 uh, zone yeah. just because I think that we got to have police officers and we, can they leave a car here and drive back and forth? We're not going to get police officers to do that. I mean, th that's just, and I think Jeff was probably, uh, Jeff Young, Sergeant Young at the time, was probably one of the first ones that really was on the 20 mile limit up in Saudi Daisy. So I think that it worked pretty well. Um, you know, we have people question why they took the police car home to Saudi Daisy, and there's a good reason. He has to get called in, he's, he was on call, and you just never know when you're going to have something big. It's kind of like public works. You can listen to the snowstorms, and sometimes you miss those snowstorms. And yesterday was a prime example of the storms coming through. Everybody was saying, well, it's missing us. It's above Cleveland. We're not going to get it. But we had a pretty good storm here. So, I mean, there's a lot of things we really need to think about, and I appreciate the open, candid conversation. So can I poll the commission on where we're comfortable mileage-wise on a specific number? I'm still thinking about it. I'm comfortable up to 35. I am too. 35. Oh, we just can't vote on it. I'm, no, no, yeah, yeah, I know. But, I'm but I need to re revise this Watch based on this conversation. And so I just want to get the language at least two steps in the correct direction. From myself, I think the 35. I think that what you've already phrased in here about extenuating circumstances that you need to be notified and the police chief and our assistant police chief, that's a judgment call y'all have based upon the circumstances at that time dealing with that particular individual. We all have family emergencies. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Um, as for as long as there, it's a take home vehicle, that's what it's there for. I think anybody else, if they're not having a take home vehicle, they can live wherever they want, mm -hmm. you know, um, and they can get here in a timely, timely fashion. We generally have people on, enough people on staff if we're stopped or if we're staffed right. We have the people, the bodies. They do a very good well of, of covering the city. Uh, we're going to, we've had two tornadoes in the last few years and had good response of them getting in here and getting in the city within reasonable time. You know, um, that's where I'm at. Okay. And, if it, and I agree, Commissioner, but, you know, I don't know that we want to get into a discussion of, you know, we're letting them live in Murfreesboro. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean because I mean, be a, and I know that's not what you were saying, but yeah. you know, when we do have those natural emergencies, disasters, you know, God forbid more train derailments, we need people to be here, you know, as quickly as, as so I, I, again, I'm comfortable in that 35 to 30 range. Um, and I think again, we'd be doing ourselves a favor if we, if we considered allowing the take home car to go that extra, you know, 10, 10 or 15 miles. Vice Mayor? I, I was thinking 30, but I, I, could, I could be talked into 35 if we were in a commission meeting where. Okay. okay. I could probably kick him part of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand. I mean, I, I just think, yeah, I, no. I, we don't want to not have officers on duty. And, I, I you know, agree. And, and that's my. You know, I, I judge that we're doing a good job trying to keep officers and you know recruit recruit them. So, okay, all right. Can I pop in just real quick? It's kind of just an overall thing about the manual because we're not all going to agree on all the line items. I wanted to take the opportunity and applaud the police department on how they did their policy manual, where it's broken out into chapters. So, like, if there needs to be a change, it's just to a particular chapter. It's not a all or none kind of deal. Could we do revisions to the employee manual that way where we, that way we're not voting yes or no on the entire manual. It's just per change. The The concern would be is that we would then need to bring each chapter forward. Um, let me see how some other municipalities do it um, after we get this revision handled this year and see if they break it up or not. Well, we don't have another commission meeting till late July. Can we try to reach out before then? I'll, I'll reach out, yes. Um, do, but break, breaking it up to bring, I don't know how many Because I think there was only like seven or eight changes in our email that you sent us. Correct. Those were the significant or the notable changes. Uh, let, me, let me see how some of the others are organized. To, to your point, because right now we're only at 
just under 60 pages. Five more revisions from now, that might be 90 pages. So let me let me see how they do it and try to find a happy medium. Okay. We will need to pass, and I guess if we broke it up, the current manual was passed by the commission, was voted on by the commission. So it would have to be completely removed and superseded by X, Y, and Z and that sort of thing. Um, let me see how they do it. Okay. And, and my point is, so like we can have, this has been great, healthy discussion for us. And that way we can do it for everything that's getting changed in the manual. And there's nothing that gets by one of us because it was not as, it wasn't a highlight because if it's not listed to us as a highlight, we might've missed it when we were reading. Okay. I'll, I'll see how some of the other, what, I'll reach out and see what the best practices are. Um, okay. We did send this through MTAS for their review and SAM for their review, and, and no one pushed back on that. But we'll reach out again and, and ask MTAS what the best practice is in this situation. And if you want to reach out to 911, they have an excellent employee manual, how it's broken out, and it shows you every time it's been changed or adopted. It's a pretty good example. Can you do that tomorrow, please? I, I have some things I want to bring up. Okay. On the very first page under introduction, you talk about the employees may receive a copy, and then you say a copy may be available, and then it says that they may review the departmental copy. That doesn't make sense to me. They should be able to have access to it whenever they have a question about it. Where are you at? It's on page three in the third paragraph down. From the top. From the top. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. It says regular employees may receive a copy of the regulations. You want to change may to will? And I think you just need to look at that and either the copy's available or it's not. If they're not given a copy, then tell them where they can get it, online yeah. or in the department. Do they not get a copy of They do, and we, we have a training hiring. after it's adopted to go over every change. But we can change that to Then I think you language. need to take that May out. I think that that was maybe what Sam put in there, possibly MTAS, just to protect the city in the case that an employee said that they didn't receive it for some reason. But I do make sure that every employee has access to it, and they do sign off on receiving I was going to the say, they, it says that they have to sign that they've read they it or received a copy. Yes. So they, that wouldn't whole water if they said they didn't have it or had not seen it. Then on page five, under the applicant, it talks about the fire department. Do What do we have to do employment of the fire department? We don't. The fire department is in here in several places. Mm -hmm. from the original it's, a, it's again on page 13. Yeah. Five and 13, it speaks we'll, we'll about the fire department. And then on page 11, it defines the work week as seven consecutive 24-hour periods. For payroll. I, I think, is it under the payroll yes. section? It's That's just under the definitions. And I was wondering how, is that strictly for payroll? Because That's, you don't yeah. work a seven-day work Correct. week. It is for payroll, okay. yeah. Then on page 14, I read this word for word. I'm glad. Under yeah. F, the appointments, number one appointments, it says it falls into four categories. You only have three categories. It's an editorial change. You only have an A, B, and C. And then I had something on page 36, but it's not, there's not a 36 here, so I must have wrote it down wrong, and I couldn't get my computer to pull up, but I appreciate being able to read through it and see what people do. Uh, 36 is, a, is workplace safety. Okay, there was something there that I highlighted, but I can't put When I get home, I'll look at it and send, send it. it. Most of that is new language. That <laughs> Most of that's new language. Yeah. Was it same or MTS that gave us workplace safety language? Um, I believe that was that was best practices from, I talked to MTAS, but also other um, okay. municipalities are using that. And on the city holidays portion, 
our code sets what the city holidays are, so that would have to be changed. And I know one of these was to add Good Friday, but it's already in code that it should be off. So um, that came up two years ago when we revised the manual. Per Sam, this superseded it. Because you're exactly correct. It also calls your birthday and other things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And so Sam, Sam's feedback was that this superseded it. Supersedes code? The charter where, where you saw that. Should we get in line? Ask him again, because um, they came up two years ago. You're you're exactly correct, and we asked that question, and, and it was the most recent asked by. Okay. Because yeah, it talks about your birthday and Good Friday. And it's a completely different set of holidays. It, it is, yes, there's lots of things that are antiquated versus what we're currently doing. Well, I think it was less holidays than we have now, so I don't know if they'd be antiquated. It. It was just like, it is like instead I, of like New Year's Eve, it's just Thanksgiving, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, instead of all the eves. I'm, I'm an antiquated in terms of practice versus what we're doing. Okay. But I, I didn't mean that they were improper. Just, okay. It, it's not following what we had been doing for years. Um, but I'll, I'll get another opinion from Sam just to verify that that did come up two years okay. ago. Are we going to uh, acknowledge Juneteenth? It's a I'm on page sixteen. I'll get. We can go back to you, Wayne. Sorry. No, it's fine. Okay. I just I'm trying to go in order so I don't omit okay. anything. Uh, we added some language defining first day of employment and what information regarding benefits, etc., is being at. They will be given, which super or caused the removal of the orientation language that was there previously. Work day, work week on page seventeen, uh, which. We added the language for how the police are actually done, their 28-day 20, 28 pay periods, et cetera. Uh, we added a little bit of clarifying language for hourly rates because uh, based on the charter stating city manager sets, not board of commissioners. Payroll deductions on page 18, we added to include insurance, 401k contributions, child support. And on page 19 is the proposed revision to the retention and incentive plan. Uh, what is in here now is what was proposed and budgeted, and it was passed in the last budget. Uh, looking at some of our peers, Saudi Daisy, they have a retention plan that is similar to what our current plan is. Uh, Red Bank has one that, that's a hair less. Uh, Saudi does have kind of a hybrid where they have a couple of early steps their first is it three or five years of employment you really remember i think it's three i think it's three too um where they have some steps and then they uh add their retention incentive plan to it um the, the goal with this was to really differentiate between first year and 11 year tenured folks uh, i will agree for the most senior folks and and, and some of us, the, the bonuses got bigger than we had intended. So what I would propose is a cap. And currently, under our current plan, that would be 6.5% of the city manager would be the max payout. So I would suggest let's just add that language so that it just caps at 6.5% of the city manager's plan. Um, I'm taking that notice. And then that would ride inflation that wouldn't come back up again. Um, I, I believe with, with the forces we're facing in the competition between McKee and, and Volkswagen and other cities, that sort of thing, we really do need to expand and differentiate. Um, as an example, Red Bank this year did a 7% COLA in, instead of the five that we did, uh, and their starting officer pay is about $1,000 higher, but we make up for it in the uniform allowance and the numbers are real close. Um, and so anything we can do to differentiate ourselves and really um, help with those longer tenured employees uh, to stay. Uh, I, I think we really need to uh, keep those folks. So have you seen the survey that MTAS did about incentives and retention? I'll send it to, I'll, I'll send it to everybody, but some of these numbers are not even close to what we're doing. And I'm looking at Jackson, 
Tennessee, 120 for five to nine years, uh, 240, 10 to 14, 360, 15 to 19. Columbia, basically the same. Uh, they've got Springfield, um, up to five years, you get $30. Five to 10, you get um, additional money. Cookville, after five years of service, $100 for each year of service up to 30 years. Uh, Mount Juliet, $100 starting on the fifth anniversary, capped at 1000 You know if they have step to pay plans? I'm just, what what Hanya sent me, I'm just looking at it. Right, and, and that's why I'm asking for an apples to apples comparison because if they're doing a step pay plan, that's what we're trying to accomplish here is the step pay plan. Well, it's hard to swallow when somebody's getting almost ten to ten thousand dollars a year, and people are making pretty good money. I understand. I hear retention. I hear retention, and I think that's important, but not to the the citizens of College Dale anymore. It's not fair, and I've heard a lot um, from citizens here recently about this, um, and I just think we need to sit down and have a commission to commission to city manager discussion about this. I'm not saying we need to do something dr uh, dramatic about it, but I think we need to kind of compare. Okay. Um, and I don't know, because I, I, I don't hear a lot about public works, if they're jumping ship. Um, Most of all people may be upset of the alternatives that they're going to come. About the, the incentives? To go into like a straight, you're here, you know, X amount of dollars per year. They're, they're not excited about what it's going to be built Yeah, I understand. I mean, but again, I think we have some responsibility to the citizens to be good corporate citizens, if you will. Um, and that's, that's the needle we're trying to thread, to keep employees and be responsible with taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. um, it is a finite resource. And, and so that is the goal is to thread that needle. Um, some of the longevity plans, other things that come into play too, and using Chattanooga as an example, Chattanooga has over 3,000 employees. So the opportunities for horizontal and vertical promotions are greater there than we have. So that comes into play as well. Um, all of these things come into play. Um, and, and since Red Bank and Saudi have now added forms of retention incentive, it, it's a tool being utilized. In, in the area. Well, I, I don't want to do anything at the moment. Uh, you know, I think that we need to kind of look at, because I asked Tanya if she could do another survey. Because I'm curious now um, what other people are doing and how, you know, are we way above the norm? I mean, there are some that are pretty close to what we're doing, um, but the majority of them are not. I would just be interested to see um, two things. One, are they doing a step pay plan where it's already built in? Or two, who are they competing with for employees? Um, as the chief pointed out, every agency right now is hiring in Hamilton mm -hmm. County. We're all competing. And I would assume most in North Georgia are too. And, and so we're racking our brains to come up with every tool we can, whether, whether it's uniform allowance or a retention plan or uh, our current scheduling practices for both PD and public works to to add those benefits to where we can recruit and keep the best employees. And, and we're certainly open for a discussion. Um, we have to put something in. We have to draw a line on what that line is. So I would be very interested on where the commission thinks they should fall. Um, I, I don't think following Chattanooga as an example would be adequate. Um, I think we would certainly lose folks or, or not recruit as well. Um, and I also, um, again, would propose putting a cap on it uh, so the numbers don't get as big uh, on where that goes. Um, but I, we're open for any conversation. We're simply doing our best to recruit and retain. Okay. Uh, I hope this is appropriate for me to interject <laughs> this here, but it's, it's great discussion. Um, and I know like some agencies are, are doing incentive, bo incentive bonuses, 
mm -hmm. up to three, four thousand dollars. I'm reading various parts of the country. I think the sheriff's office just did a little over a thousand for SROs, I believe. Um, but another thing to come here and Commissioner Sadler has has pointed this out before, and it's it's certainly true and accurate. You know, I was talking to a chief the other day, and and he has basically said that he doesn't look to hire people anymore that he feels is going to be a 10, 15, 20 year employee. He says, I'm, I'm looking to get people that are going to give me two to five good years because I expect them to move on. I haven't given up on hope on that yet. <laughs> I'm really trying to make this a, a legacy agency where we, we keep and retain people. Um, and, and as Sat Commissioner Sadler has pointed out, you know, if we're turning people over every two to five years, there's a lot of expense in retraining, sending new officers to, you know, and you, and you can't beat experience. Um, and we're running into that now too with our detectives. You know, once you go up into our detective division, there's only two, and that kind of becomes your 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 staying spot, right? Just you get specialized training; they enjoy the job. So, if you've got a guy that's been up there 15 years and he's making the same thing as a corporal that's been here too, and there's no plan in place to increase his salary, what keeps that kind of employee here? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, I just think it's you know just for discussion purposes as y'all move forward and you. You weigh all this out. If we're if we're spending three to five thousand dollars on equipment and training every two to three years, as, as these guys are moving in and out, you know, does that balance when you look at incentive type pay in that sort of situation? Well, the whole thing is you really have to look at the whole salary uh, package that we offer employees. And to me, we always battle: are we paying employees the right pay? And for years public works was really below mm -hmm. where they should be. I'm for, I'm, and, I, and I've talked about this with Ted, was I'm for paying the employees what their value is to us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are really good hard workers. And I don't mind paying them that money uh, because it's a, it's a salary package. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easier for me to sell that than some of the bonuses, if you will. I would be perfectly willing to back calculate this and do a step. Yeah. Uh, if, if that would make everyone more comfortable. I think we just need to sit down and look at it and have some recommendations. And Well, I've planted a flag. If the commission will tell me their thoughts on it and, and where they want to fine tune it, uh, we can continue the conversation. Um, I, I feel like I've, I've laid out a recommendation and articulated the reasons why I, Feel like it, it's good. It's for those employees. That is, that was the onus of this. The question actually came up in public works um, when they were looking at the difference between a, a one year and a, an eleven year employee, and it was insignificant. To be yeah. real honest with you, and I'm going to tell you, just not government, but every business out there today are fighting the same battle we are. Everyone. It is not unique to government. It is. And I would say it's three to five years. Now, people have people come in, a good friend of mine who's a manager in a corporation, and he said, you know, people, they'll work a month, and that's it. And some of them will come back and get their paycheck. Some of them won't. It, if I'm going to work, I want to get paid for it. You know, I just don't, I don't get that. It's just different. We have changed as a society, and I think we're all struggling. And agree completely. So I think that I definitely want to keep the police department. I definitely want to keep public works because we definitely depend on public works as well. Um, and I think um, we need to look at, we did a salary study. Mm -hmm. I don't remember when we did that last. Um, Four or five years. Uh, yeah, I, I think we just need to look at it and maybe have some recommendations down and so, I like the idea of a cap to a certain degree. Um, so we took that salary study because it predated myself. And that, that's what we've been basing on based on Department of Wage and Labor, which I knew is specific inflation and over the last three budget cycles to get our employees up to pay to market. Um, the previous approach was within range. And, and we have pushed and, and gotten there over three budget cycles to get what that salary study projected out market analysis for the positions pays um, by and large. Uh, so. 
Could you send us that last salary study that was paid for so we could kind of use that as a reference point? Sure. It, it's older. It, okay. it was during the, the second commission that I was elected. So it's ten years old. Yeah. We've done two. Ten years old? Since Somewhere. you've been, no, since yeah. you've been it's about a commission, five. we've done two. Yeah. two. Yeah. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the first one. How much does it cost to have a new one done? Well, at that time. Was it 10 grand? It was not cheap, I remember. Yeah. Time. I mean, we were kind of in the Because we'd also changed job description titles. We did so change this time. last time we did that. Do we have any neighbor cities that have bought one recently that we could for you? <laughs> one thing we have done is Intas does a lot of salary studies and that type of thing. And so I definitely take all that data and we analyze all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just glad we're having a conversation. You know, may not go anywhere, but at least we're having some. So, as we're trying to revise this document and get it in front of the commission, what do we see as the next steps? This is kind of where I was along. I'd like to see these broken out into individual items because we are having so much discussion on each one. Well, I think that we need to vote on this eventually, right? And you're going to go back and you're going to see what other cities are doing. I haven't. That was. But you're going to look at how they break it out. Like, oh, yes. Yes. How they break it out. And then. I mean, we, we need to vote on this and then re, redo it in the. Was there something that's making us have to pass this in July? No. no. Just good practice. And the, trying to stay on a roughly two year cycle is all but if it pushed to august that's not a, a huge problem so are we looking at you're talking about everything that we discussed for it to come out in august that we vote on it per se instead of july can we take part of it and vote on it and then or do we have to go that on? was what mr sadler was asking so we're going to look and see how some what best practices are for the organization of the manual yeah and go from there i'll just give you some feedback when we see how that shakes okay well, moving on, uh, vacation leave, we added some clarifying language on when they should be uh, requested, et cetera, on to holidays. Uh, so we, we are, are currently at the bottom of 10 and average is right at 13. Uh, we're requesting to add Good Friday and Veterans Day, which puts us on the low side of average at, at 12. Uh, this conversation came up after the state recognized Juneteenth and so did the county. We're not currently requesting Juneteenth unless the commission decides they want us to take it as well. I'd be in favor of following federal holidays. Just all federal. I want to say that's 15, 14 or 15. It's a new state holiday. Right? Yeah, it just passed. Yeah. June, well, there's federal and four state. Um, yeah. States a little less than better, I think. Yes. Yeah, and we have more than, more than us. most cities. We used to. Do. We don't. We don't now. Ten's the lowest the in Hamilton County right now. It's us and look out. Maybe I guess 15 and 14. They followed the state push your birthday. That's what we started looking at all that when Juneteenth came out. So your recommendations follow federal or county? I'd rather just be straight with federal. That way it's easier for people to know when we're closed and not. Let, let us pull federal so we can do a comparison. Because I readily If you don't mind, I'd like to see it again. I don't readily know what it is. I believe it's probably more than what we're doing. Um, I think it's much more. Yeah, they did Christmas more. Day and a lot of the... Yeah. Uh, Correct. The There's a Monday lot of federal that we don't follow. Do they do how, how about Thanksgiving? The eves? I, I'm not sure. The, they, they, they have Thanksgiving they Friday. They probably after. don't do the eves, which are wanted. Let me pull federal, state, and what we're currently doing. State's 14. State's 14. Yeah. And then we'll double check too about code. And if yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm talk to Sam about that. Then we'll just do a comparison. I'll include that on Friday okay. in my email. And we can go from there. The one thing I would ask, and I hope we can, is I'd like to propose this to the employees and see what their preference is. That's a good idea. I mean, 
it impacts them the most. I can sit here and say, all day and say, hey, let's do federal or state. And They're going to want the one that's the most less diverse. Well, I mean, I think that. <laughs> I mean, no, that's I, just going to be real. Well, I mean, real honest. but I think that maybe to me, almost if somebody wanted Juneteenth off, maybe there's a vacation or a holiday that, I don't know. They don't want. They don't want. Yes, thank you. Um, and I, I know that's hard to administer. But I don't know that we, we have the ability to float like that. That's the it could be running to your birthdays. If you don't take it exactly yeah. on your birthday, when do you take it? Because your birthday fell on a Sunday. Um, so the administration side is a challenge. Um, well, why don't you find out how many days it truly is? Yeah. And, could it, uh, could yeah, and just put in your message Friday and let's look at it. Usually we're talking about a lot, a lot, what most mm -hmm. Department of Educations do. They will give out two and let the the board has the final say, but the, they get the uh, the teachers and staff and all staff, everyone, to vote on one of the two schedules that's been offered. You know, like there's an A, B, and C. Um, so like one with the federal holidays, maybe mm -hmm. one with the state holidays, and then maybe a hybrid. You know, but just show them, see what okay. these are your choices. Which would you prefer? Yeah, I'll include that on Friday, and, and just and wait feedback. They okay. can choose, and then we can look at the survey. And make I do it. think both are going to be more than we're currently requesting. Yeah. Yeah. So. Everybody is. Okay. More than that. All right. A uh, little clarifying language on Obama 21. The city will not generally uh, provide financial assistance. Is that it? Uh, paid leave under certain circumstances, the city manager may approve unpaid leave for an employee upon request, which, which replaced, uh, which then removed the last sentence. Um, nothing crazy, no changes. While we're in the area of all the college and incentive pay, at some point, wasn't there something passed where if the city put someone through the police academy, if they left? In two years, they have to pay back a prorated amount. Is that in the handbook? Yeah. Okay. I okay, I just don't remember it, seeing it. It's within two years, and it prorates. Okay. Do they sign something for that? They, they do sign something like that. Um, while we're having the conversation, just to be clear, it's the cost of the academy. That okay. doesn't include their salary and the fuel going back yeah. and forth and all that. So we still take a loss. Yeah, okay. It's, and it's more than we get paid back. All right. We added some language under reporting investigating harassment. This came out of uh, Chapter 5 of our other code uh, that if someone believes that they're being harassed by a commissioner, they report it to Sam and he investigates or to the city attorney. Weapons policy. This was previously in uh, the harassment section and we updated it but still in the harassment section we updated it based on some changes to tca where we had gotten overly specific and the law has changed relaxing that uh, workplace safety and employee responsibility this is all all new basically we're trying to move in that safety direction with ocean requirements and that sort of thing infectious diseases documentation etc We added uh, disciplinary action up to termination under the abuse of legal drugs. Substance abuse testing, we revised uh, section three, uh, submitted a substance abuse test, any of the following apply, uh, it's injured, uh, motor vehicle accident, unless an exception is made the resources manager, city, if damage to the city vehicles determined to be significant, uh, and it's one car accident, they'll be drug tested. And if it's the second time within 30 days, regardless of damage, they're going to be tested. Uh, nepotism, uh, we added language to prohibit married spouses. Uh, we revised uh, personal telephone calls to personal communications, just uh, time changing, basically texting, et cetera. Uh, professional conduct, we added some language that uh, while wearing city attire or present in the city building or vehicle employees are prohibited from engaging in sexual or otherwise unprofessional conduct. This is a national trend of employees while they are wearing your seal 
posting videos and things. Uh, personnel records, we added some clarifying language uh, using in accordance to MTAS's retention records. Uh, we added some language uh, which came out of the PD manual. If the reason for corrective counseling has not been repeated after a period of one year has been resolved, and no can be placed in the personnel file stating such. If a complaint is filed against an employee is determined to be unfounded, the allegation will generally not be included in the employee's personnel file. Where do those documents go if they're not in the personnel file? Uh, if it is an unfounded complaint, we don't retain them. That was uh, an MTAS policy. We've had some situations where unfounded complaints were being used as a means to bully them, and we reached out to MTAS, and they suggested that. Is that something that we would have to... Would that be just enough to have it in the handbook, or would do we need to do something else to say that that's okay to dispose of those government records? I understand from MTAS that this was adequate because we reached out to them prior to drafting this, and then had Betsy review this as well. Okay. Uh, Non-city social media. We were, we added some language. Employees have the constitutionally protected right to post matters of public concern. Yeah. Public Etc. Et um, employees are discouraged from posting anything on the internet that could reasonably be construed as an act of harassment, threatening, etc. And then we added some language that any posting that could be construed to represent the city essentially just has to be honest. Um, now this includes all that are involved in and in running if it's, and working with. If it could be construed to represent the city. city so yeah. my city manager Facebook page, for instance. So, you know, or something that I posted, it ha I could be held accountable for that. According to this. if it is, if it is reasonably construed to represent the city. Okay. If you, if you posted something that had to do with um, the submarine situation mm -hmm. as an individual, that wouldn't be representing the city. If you, you as a commissioner posted something that was non-factual, that would, as a commissioner regarding city matters, that okay. would fall. Uh, the perception we had a little more clarifying language about employees being careful to avoid compromising relationships by social media. This was a situation that rose across the state when um, that very public police incident occurred that was unfortunate. Other agencies and individuals would post memes and that sort of thing and then damage their relation, their working relationship. That's where that language. Uh, let's see, page 48, we clarified the uh, trip reimbursement. Official travel must be approved by the supervisor and key manager in advance, and, and the employee must submit a request form along with a uh, conference program if available to receive per diem. When no other city vehicles are available, employees will also be reimbursed for mileage at the federal schedule rate. The mileage request should be submitted promptly to request reimbursement. No other personal expenses incurred due to travel. Uh, babysitting or pet boarding will be reimbursed. Uh, so if you have a take-home vehicle, you're expected to use that vehicle because, frankly, it's more cost-effective for the city. And we wanted to go ahead and get language in that pet boarding and babysitting wouldn't be covered by the city if you went to a conference. Quick question. Did you say page 48? It's My numbering's a little different. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm trying to read along with mm -hmm. That is under uh, Section Q, trip reimbursement. Oh, okay. The trip reimbursement's under T. Pardon? It's towards the end. Did you say Q? Mine says T. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's T on page 47. Okay. okay. Is there two different versions we're looking at? I have notes in this one. Okay. I didn't anything um, but it blurs it up so bad okay. I got too, too much paper so I was trying to be more clear um, so also this section one on the next page references the 20 miles again how, how we'll revise that to be based on the earlier conversation do, do, do. Moonlighting outside employment, we clarified um, the employee must uh, receive approval from their supervisor uh, and the city manager. And then we added that key general 
key managers will generally not be allowed to moonlight within the city unless the city, city manager approval is given. Uh, we want to avoid conflicts of interest. We, we don't want someone moonlighting in their field for the city within the city and, and giving that appearance of conflict. Do we have any kind of paper trail where they like they fill out like a lot of agencies do, like where they're going to be working, how many hours a week, who they report to, and then you sign yay or nay on it? That That's what we will okay. be doing. Um, historically, we, we've not kept those records. Okay. And that is it. So my, my two go-dos are to follow up on the retention incentive and the holiday coming out of this and modify the language on the mileage. And the breakout, how others break okay. out. Okay. 36. In the very last paragraph, you've marked out illegal drugs, and I'm wondering if you meant to erase that. Can you give me the section since I'm off the wrong page? It's on page 36 under alcohol, drug and alcohol testing. The last paragraph, it says, it's the policy of the city that use of illegal drugs, but you have illegal drugs hot, uh, marked out. It's under section E, drug. It's intentional. Let me, let me. Yeah. Under drug and alcohol testing. There is nationally an opioid crisis that are often prescribed. Yeah. And that language was to clarify that someone who is. Well, did you mean to leave out illegal? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That way, if someone is prescribed so narcotics, they cannot that. operate. They cannot come to the, to work intoxicated by prescribed narcotics. So you just need to delete that marked out word. Right. It'll go away. We were showing some markups. I think we're on the same page. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Going through my editing. I appreciate it. All righty. That's it on all of those things. We'll start with Jason. All right. Probably saw on Facebook, but little Debbie Park is opening up Friday. Um, I'll be there. You guys want to come out, see that. Um, and then the week after that, we're having our freedom event. Um, both have been getting a lot of outreach on social media, so I think we'll have a pretty good turnout. Um, so, yeah. Um, planning. We're in the process of signing the contract for uh, the zoning rewrite. Um, so we should get started on that probably within the next couple of weeks. Chief? Um, just wanted to let y'all know that finally <laughs> all of the Durangos that were ordered last year are now fully upfitted and ready to be on patrol. We have one that's just waiting assignment, but that should be here in a few days. Um, the F 150s here, the Durangos that we ordered got pushed back again. So still not sure what the delivery date is on those. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, we did get our uh, Axon in-car cameras uh, installed. Uh, the fleet will be finished up tomorrow, so all those. And then other than that, we're just ready for July 3rd. Andrew? We had uh, Sean McMahon, one of our codes people. That was Jeremy's counterpart. He had left he had moved to Missouri so we had a void for his position Jeff Heights is who will be replacing him he'll be starting uh, July 7th so we're really, really excited he uh, comes with some law enforcement and code enforcement experience so I think he brings a lot to the table we look forward to having him start with us um, medic five renovations come along well we have had some setbacks with procurement of materials some items have been back on back order but still hoping maybe the end of July, first part of August is what we're hoping or projecting for. So just want to give you all an update. Um, Public Works, we had a large chunk of our pouring, paving done this year. Um, we got Talent Road and um, Cherry Lane finished up. So that's great. We're still working through some traffic control plans and scheduling for swing year. Looking at middle of July getting that. So we have officially acquired the three easements with our obstruction clearing project after three years now. Um, we closed on the last one just this morning. So we're starting to work on a new schedule for the tree clearing itself. Um, I also did order the beacon fixture given an estimated ship date of July the 20th. Um, then the electrician's six to eight weeks out. So we're looking at project completion around the 1st of August. 
Uh, with Parks and Recreation, we have the <coughs> Teens on the Track event coming up this Wednesday. Um, we're super excited about it. Um, got to go on the news again, so we're getting some good press out there getting called with Shell. Um, you actually mentioned Channel 9, and that's who I've been going on the most lately. So uh, we're super excited about it. We've got some local kids, I'm going to say. One's 13, the other's in his mid-20s. So um, we're excited. We're going to have some food trucks there, uh, Windy City Eats, Kona Ice, um, and then... We're also adding this year, um, just like we've done with our Christmas in College Dell and some of like our Wizard School, having our local businesses in the College Dell Udawa area that want to get involved with the community. There's a chance for them to do that um, just by contacting us. So we got some pediatric um, doctors and dentistry um, and whatnot that are going to come and do kind of little activities. So when the kids are like, oh, I tired of listening to music, and the parents still want to be there, there'll be something for them to, to have as well. So we're super excited and hopefully we'll be nailing down who's going to be performing in July because this year we decided we're going to do it twice instead of just having one night with five or six bands. So <laughs> we're going to spread it out a little bit. Um, we're super excited about that. Our paddleboard classes, our pickleball clinics, all of those are being full every single time. Um, and we, I really want to highlight uh, the last thing that we did uh, with the library. Uh, they're doing the all together community uh, theme for the summer reading. And uh, I think it was last week, week before last, um, we packed over 250 care kits for those in need uh, for the Samaritan Center. And so um, I've already been back in contact with them to figure out other ways that we as a community in the city are able to give back um, with the help and us helping Samaritan Center give back. So really excited to, um, to see that relationship and partnership continue to grow with them. And as always, just trying to make College Hill a, a stronger community. So. Kristen? I'm good. Thank are you all you, for being me. Bridget? <clears throat> we'll keep our fingers crossed. We'll find out June 10th if Signal Mountain is going to join the coalition. It made it through all their budget readings. So Elaine said that she uh, would that, let me know in July. She said, that's great. Jim? Um, the auditors came last week and they finished in record time. They finished in one day. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. It's crazy. And they come again in September, as usual. They come in June and September. Um, they will be here more than one day in September. I guarantee that. Um, I've got everything sent as far as budget, paperwork. I've got everything sent to the comptroller. So we're just waiting on feedback from them. It all should be good. Commissioner Sadler? Do we have an update on our judge and the temporary judge? We have a temporary judge currently. It's a 30 day posting and he's been here a week ish now and we'll follow up with uh, Kevin in, in a couple of weeks to see what the path forward is. Okay. Is Jay Underwood our yes. Valencia? Mm -hmm. Our, our he's, judge. He's and just so that everyone is aware, uh, we have to pay both. Um, it's a it's a state constitution issue. Um, and so Sam and I have been going back and forth for a while and so we have to pay both while there's a temporary appointment. The what, attorney general. I wondered about that. Did Please. that also happen before the order was signed with the fill-in judges were both getting paid, or is it just now that an order was signed? It's just now no, that the fill-in judges correct. The didn't fill -in, get paid. Fill -in okay. judges did not. It was once the order was signed, mm -hmm. and it was for 30 days and, and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, but so that you're aware, we have to pay both, and that is $5,400 a month that we had not planned on. But okay. Our hands are tied. The attorney general has said... That's what we'll do. And there was, were there, are there any updates on the parking lot back there? It was just on my mind because I drove past it recently. The our, our parking lot, I'm still getting pricing from engineers to see what it's going to cost to get it designed out. Okay. Did you say designed out? Designed, correct. Would, would we not do that in-house or? I have not had time. It, 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 it would take 60 to 80 hours of devoted time and I just haven't found the devoted time to do it. Is that, we have 
I don't know his official title. He's staff. We have, we have a staff engineer. It, it's outside of his wheelhouse. Okay. The, the 3D grading aspects of AutoCAD. And so he's focused on utilities and high flow and subdivision review and that sort of thing. And, and like I said, I, as Mayor Lamb can attest, she's reminded me multiple times of my failure to get the design complete. So I'm going to cry uncle mm -hmm. and, and get some pricing uh, and then come back to the commission. No, I'm, I'm fully acknowledging. Um, and even uh, even when we had an engineer such as yourself, we've always had to do some outsourcing. We have program. to do some outsourcing. The The situation you run into is design work, you need to hyper-focus. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very difficult working for a municipality to clear your plate for a couple weeks at a time to not go do subdivision reviews and, uh oh, this problem came up in the field, we need a solution now, et cetera. Yeah. And so we've, to your point, historically, major designs we outsourced. I had hoped to do this with myself and, and just have it. So, any questions? Nope. Uh, the question came to me this week about the parking area at Thatcher Switch Playground in the area. When will that be available for people? to use so right now it's closed for two things one there's still the damage checker road in the train derailment mm -hmm. also wright brothers has installed one of the catch basins for their road project and it's still not safe for vehicle travel so we're working with wright brothers to get the road fixed back because it's basically they're the ones that are going to be doing it the state promised us that they would fix the road from the damage and so i've been having them uh, about every week i can probably get it uh, this week it is on my to-do list to be getting a date from them. Um, they said they were going to do it while they had their paving throughout finishing up, and they finished up last week. So I'll be following up with them to try and get a date. Thank you. That's all. I'll just, because I've talked a lot already. Um, my thing, I will be at the the open opening of the park mm -hmm. Friday morning. But also, have we got any feedback as to how long it would take or how how our Judge Wilson is doing or is expected the ballpark figure to be out? I do not have anything actionable. And I think that's more of a yeah. personal. Yeah. Personal. And, and, and medical stuff, we cannot police it. So. Your answer is no, I do not have a timeline. I'll, I'll follow up with him once we get a couple of weeks into this. I just wonder how he's doing, basically. Mayor? Uh, a couple things. Little Oringo Road. So Saturday night I was going home about 1130. Almost midnight. I did not know the state was out painting the stripes on Little Oringo Road. All of a sudden I see these big lights and big trucks everywhere and they from Windowning all the way back to I, I'm not sure how far they went down but they did a good job on it so I appreciate them doing that. I didn't know if you had noticed it yet. I hadn't. I didn't know they were going to be working out there. Either. They didn't do right before you get to the uh, laundry where it's got that wide area and different horizontal stripes in it or vertical. Um, but they did everything else. It looks pretty good. So um, the grass on Uwa Ringo at the apartments is getting tall again. I think we really need to stay on top of them. Some of the businesses over there called me again, so definitely appreciate that. Would you like them to coordinate directly with Jeremy? With what? Jeremy. Sure, I can. I just it would save you from them calling you and you calling Jeremy. If we could I can do that. Contact Jeremy. Yeah, I don't have no problems of it. Uh, the last one is so the chief and I had a, I guess a discussion in the last commission meeting, and then we had a. Uh, kind of a sidebar conversation outside and um, he uh, kind of reminded me in a very nice way and I appreciate that, that I was right on track that I did want additional cameras for the police department because really, and I appreciate you sending the uh, March 7th uh, video. The challenge is for me is having multiple cameras we're having to keep up mm -hmm. and Chief made some good points when he did the presentation to us. So. I just want to say we talked about it. We, you know, uh, he agreed with me that we did talk about this, but we all voted for three. So, um, and I appreciate that, Chief. Yes, sir. Um, 
and I really appreciate, you know, having that conversation, whether it was with Eric or whoever, I appreciate that conversation. Because, yes, I am getting a little older, and I forget things from time to time. So, um, But anyway, appreciate that. The grass across the street, I saw Public Works cutting that with a big, I guess, the bat wing or whatever they cut. It looked good, so appreciate that. Airport, you got to get some buildings and hangars built out there. I know. I know. That's what I keep saying, too. All right. Well, that's all I have. That's now. So we're adjourned. Thank you very much. I will. Thank you so much for your help. You, you made it a better trip for us, for sure. No, we won't. Hey, do you need this? Uh, I do everything on the internet. Or